As a creator, creating content is almost second nature. Once the idea hits my mind, I almost go into autopilot, doing scripting, recording, and editing until it's complete. However, getting it seen on the crowded space that is YouTube is a whole other challenge. With TubeBuddy though, you get access to a wide range of tools like tag optimizers and search ranking results to help you optimize your content to succeed on YouTube. Want to give it a shot? Click the link down below to learn more. Recently, this channel has been getting a lot of extra attention due to two different video types that we've been making a lot of recently. One, really cheap budget builds, and two, we recently tested a very obscure product that was sent over to me from a viewer in China, um, and that video actually did very well, and you all seem to really be receptive of it, which was the GTX 965M video, which was me testing a graphics card that was made using a laptop graphics card, and it actually worked in a desktop PC. But today, we're coming back a little bit closer to home and checking out weird obscure products on eBay, more specifically a very obscure processor that I'm going to be using to upgrade an X99 system that I have lying around as my streaming PC. And with a quick search on eBay, I managed to come across this. Yes, you are looking at this right. This is an Intel Xeon E5 2650V3 processor on eBay for $113. Now what the hell is a Xeon E3 2650V3? Well, this right here more specifically is an engineering sample processor, and well, the main reason I'm interested in it for $113 is the fact that it has 10 cores, 20 threads. To put that into perspective, there aren't really any processors around the $113 mark, but let's just use something like the Ryzen 5 2600 for example. That is a 6 core 12 threaded processor that comes in at a price point around $150, $160 depending on promo. This thing right here is 10 cores, 20 threads, and costs less at $113. Now your scam alert might be going off in your head right now, and after doing a little bit of research, I realized that these are actually engineering samples, meaning that they're not actually certified retail chips, but they're actually test chips that Intel made when doing the development process for these processors. And after the official release happens, these processors kind of just get thrown out into the wild. And in places like Japan, where this one is located, people have a ton of them, and they're able to just flip them on eBay, and there's definitely some some buyers who are willing to pay the money for it. Now, some of the immediate downsides with this processor is its core clock, which is only at 2.2 gigahertz. When considering that processor that I just mentioned earlier, the Ryzen 5 2600, that processor comes with a base clock of 3.4 gigahertz. That is a very substantial difference because when it comes to things like gaming, having a higher frequency is more important than having a boatload of cores. A very good example of that is a video that my friend Ozzy from OzTalks Hardware did testing out some old AMD Opteron server processors, which have a boatload of cores, 24 cores to be exact, but don't perform ideally in games. But gaming is not the main reason why I'm getting this processor. I am getting this processor because my X99 system is currently a secondary streaming PC, meaning that its entire job is to encode video. And for most people out there who don't know, encoding benefits the most from having more cores. And for those who do not know, video encoding, like within OBS, very much benefits from having a very high core count CPU, while be it in some cases clock speed is definitely important, but in most cases core count is definitely more important than clock speed when it comes to things like X.264 encoding. So because of this, I have decided that I'm going to be purchasing the CPU, waiting the, well, couple weeks it says it's going to take to get here, and then testing this thing up against my i7-5820K. So, um, I guess it's time for us to order this and then wait the uh, extreme amount of time that it's going to take but a few seconds for you guys for it to actually show up. So um, yeah, let's go ahead and order the CPU then. So I actually would have had the CPU a day earlier than I'm going to get it right now because, well, I didn't know that the default delivery method was to authorize a signature for the delivery. So, um, yeah, it's sitting at my local post office right now and I have to uh, go pick it up myself. So let's go get it.
Well, after waiting forever in the post office, we got it. And uh, it has so many freaking stamps all over it. This is like one of the most interesting things that was sent to me. So um, let me open it up real quick and just see how this thing is packaged. Yeah, is, this is about what I expected. Processor right here, wait for it to focus on it. Boom, we're looking at an Intel Confidential Engineering sample. It's packaged pretty well and came straight from uh, Japan. So uh, I gotta take this thing home and then we'll uh, start playing around with it. All right, so I installed the CPU into the system. I replaced my old 5820K, which you can kind of see right here is covered in uh, thermal paste, but this was my 5820K that was originally in the PC. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna end up doing with it if I end up keeping this 10 core CPU, but um, I have it installed and it's ready to go. I've yet to boot it up, so fingers crossed that it will work. But what I wanted to do was stop real quick to give a big warm thank you to the provider of the graphics card for this PC build. We actually were sent a graphics card graphics card from our friends over at NVIDIA. This, my ladies and gentlemen, is an RTX 2060 and we got this sent to us for a video review and we decided to incorporate it into this PC because it'll be our long-standing editing rig inside a new office space we recently just moved into. Um, and maybe now with the RTX inside the system, which goddamn, it looks pretty freaking nice. I can't lie, that RTX 2060, look at it. Ooh so beautiful oh yes uh, we'll do really good and we might do a little bit of a ray tracing benchmarks and some streaming PC tests with the NVIC encoder versus this 10 core CPU so um, as we mentioned new office space that we just got this is gonna be like the main editing and streaming PC that we're gonna be using um, so special thanks again to Nvidia and we'll be having some benchmarks of the system using the RTX card and this 10 core CPU at the very end of the video pending that this thing boots up so uh, let's uh, fingers crossed plug this thing in and see if it works all right fingers crossed oh wait all right fingers crossed come on baby boot boot for me it's still working so far give me a display output please Normally X99 does take a while to boot, so I'm gonna give this a little bit of time before I declare this um, not working. Fingers crossed. Uh, okay, this isn't a good sign. Um, well, that's weird. Wait a minute. Okay, looks like we actually have a boot. It booted, showing a CPU fan error for some reason. Not sure why it's doing that. It might just be because I have my, I replugged in the profile and everything, but uh, oh, I have it plugged into the wrong header. I plugged it into the wrong CPU header. I have it plugged into a, oh, a pump header. That's the problem. I could swap that real quick and that shouldn't be an issue, but uh, let's just boot in real quick and uh, see if I can boot into Windows. Genuine Intel 2.2 gigahertz processor. RAM is running at 2200 megahertz, which is a very weird frequency. I'm not totally sure why it's running at 2200 megahertz, but um, let's just try booting into Windows and see what happens. It's running at 45 degrees Celsius on idle, so there may be something wrong with that fan profile. I'll have to mess with that in a minute. Okay, so in Windows, it shows up as a genuine 2.2 gigahertz processor. It looks like it's boosting all the way up to actually 2.6 gigahertz, which is much better than I thought it was gonna be for a 10 core CPU. Now, the real question is, is this actually a 10 core CPU? And by the looks of this, yeah, 10 cores. 20 threads at 2.2 gigahertz and holy moly, it's actually working. Now, yeah, the display driver's kind of broken right now because I don't have the drivers for the RTX card installed, but I mean, guys, as of right now, I have a 10 core, 20 threaded CPU running at about 2.6 gigahertz-ish um, for $120. Will it perform well? I mean, I have no idea yet. I'm still gonna have to do some benchmarks, but um, I'm very excited to try that out very soon. So let me uh, run some benchmarks and uh, get back with you with some of the performance numbers. 
All right guys, so after a few days of benchmarking and testing this system over and over again in a variety of different applications, I'm here with a little bit of a conclusion as to this system and exactly what kind of use case it could be used for and how we plan on implementing it into our workflow in the future. So. Let's go ahead and dive into this real quick. Now, the first thing I want to dive into is gaming performance because I know it's a concern that you all have as a viewer and I personally have had before I actually loaded this thing up and started playing games because of that very low clock speed. Thing is with older Xeons, you can get very high core count CPUs for very cheap, hence the $120 one that we're using in this system right now. But the issue is the clock speed. These things are meant to be ran in server environments where cores are king and clock speed are, well, really not that important. And this system boosts up to only 2.5 gigahertz, which in most applications is perfectly fine, but gaming really likes fast cores. And in this case, I was really concerned that the performance would just be so bad that it just is not usable. But in all honesty, playing games like Fortnite, Black Ops 4, and Overwatch, some esports titles, which really like to take advantage of CPUs with higher clock speed and also a really decent GPU, actually performed, well, very well. At 1080p with a mixture of medium settings for things like Black Ops 4 and pro settings for Fortnite, which is epic view distance and everything else on very low, we're getting a well over 100 FPS experience. The RTX 2060 is definitely putting in the work, even though yes, it is being bottlenecked by that CPU, it is not that severe of a bottleneck to where gaming is, well, impossible on this system. Yes, it's definitely not balanced, but the main reason it's not going to be balanced is because this system is not going to be primarily for gaming. Yes, as you can see on screen, I can play games and it will be good for my live streaming, but as I just mentioned, live streaming is the main focus of this system, along with some video editing when we do plan on doing so. Now, the original idea behind the system was to buy that 10-core 20-threaded CPU as a secondary streaming PC for my workstation that I have right here where I want to be able to have a PC to take all the encoding load off the first PC and have, well, no lag whatsoever when gaming on my main PC. But that plan has changed when we recently moved into a new office for the YouTube channel, which was a very big move on our part. And I give a big thanks to everybody who has watched our videos because you all, well, made it possible. And then when NVIDIA shot us an email about sending us an RTX 2060, I was like, this can be the main editor editing station and rendering station and gaming station for the workspace. So when that happened, I wanted to run some tests to see exactly how the onboard encoder with the RTX 2060, which Nvidia vouches is way improved compared to the last generation Pascal based GPUs, where the NVENC encoder was good, but it was still better to go with X264 encoding within OBS. And as you can see with a side by side comparison, the experience is night and day, actually. This 10-core CPU does a decent job as a single PC setup. Now, if I was stuck with this 10-core CPU and let's say a 10th gen NVIDIA GPU, I would more likely than not go with the CPU encoding because it will look better than NVENC. But as you can tell with the RTX 2060, the NVENC competes with medium encoding preset on the CPU side and honestly, it's a no brainer. There are definitely some hitches with the CPU encoding and with a little bit of tuning and maybe lowering the preset a little bit, it would run a lot smoother. But the fact that I can use an RTX 2060, a $350 graphics card, which honestly for this purpose is really nicely priced compared to the other offerings on the market, I can get a much better gaming experience on my end. And the streaming quality is about the same as running an X264 streaming setup. It's kind of a no brainer. Now that doesn't mean this 10 core 20 threaded CPU purchase was a total waste compared to my 5820K. I still want to use this thing for video editing, and I do want to expand on the quality that we produce on this channel by doing things like 3D rendering, some After Effects things, and other things within Premiere Pro that would really benefit from a higher core count CPU. And as you can tell from the Cinebench run with a well over 1000 score, it definitely has the legs to push some really demanding multi-threaded applications, and this 10 core 20 threaded CPU for 120 bucks is a great value for that. But also, you know, with a RTX 2060, I had to test the ray tracing. And sadly, well, we don't have a copy of Battlefield 5 because we spent all our money moving into an office currently. Uh, but sooner or later, we will have Battlefield 5 for our testing methodology. But I did want to test a thing that I learned about from UFD Tech, which if you want to check that video out, hit the eye in the top right corner. But that video is a really awesome explanation showing the Quake 2 path tracing mod, which basically is a different way of using ray tracing 
tracing. It explains it more in his video if you want a more in-depth guide on exactly how to install it and see exactly how the technology works. But basically, ray tracing was implemented into the Quake 2 mod. And as you can tell on screen here, running it does severely limit your performance numbers. So I'm at like 60 FPS, 1080p max settings, but it looks freaking amazing. And honestly, this is the first time I've actually got excited looking at something with ray tracing, because if you could see this implemented and a lot of different indie titles coming up that games that really just don't require all that much horsepower to run. But if you have an RTX card, you can unlock a new visual experience and some indie titles. This could be game changing for the indie market, let alone the AAA titles with RTX. Right now, that really doesn't interest me. And Battlefield 5 was not a great implementation of this. This is a really good implementation. And I really think that what we have here could be very special. And this benchmark kind of shows it. And I think it's really cool that ray tracing exists. And at $350, if you were someone who does live streaming and maybe into a lot of indie titles and really want to get into ray tracing, the RTX 2060 actually makes a lot of sense at $350. But overall, I guess I'm very happy with this system. It does exactly what I needed to do. And really all that's left is for me to take this PC and well, move it into the office space. So how about, how about we go do that right now? guys we have the new set set up in the office i'm gonna give a little bit of a tour real quick before i talk about what's going on with this monitor uh this is the new office space we currently are uh moved in here and this is where we're gonna be doing some stuff we can do some sound treatments and um this is gonna be the new video set for the toasty bros we're gonna have some lights right here and there's gonna be a lot of different stuff coming to the channel regarding this video set and everything that's gonna be happening very soon um but as you can tell right here um, my poor Pixio PX uh, 34.7C, the ultrawide I was going to be using, is having issues. But worry not, this monitor is, well, just a little bit janky. And as you can tell, it slowly starts to disappear to where it doesn't exist anymore after, like, warming up for a while. So I give it about two more minutes and it'll probably stop doing this. So, you know, rocking that budget monitor life and trying to save money and expenses the best way we can. So that about wraps this video up here, guys. If you like this video, leave a like down below and comment 10 core processor in the comment section down below if you made it this far. I appreciate all the support recently on the channel, allowing us to, well, get an office space like this. So thank you guys again. If you have any suggestions or future things that we could do on the channel with all this new space, please let me know in the comment section down below. Thanks again, guys, and I hope to see you all in the next one. Peace.